the notion of intangible assets and the notion that somebody in the company has to be responsible for safeguarding those assets uh, uh, has literally only uh, come into our lexicon, if you will, uh, particular corporate security lexicon in the last three to four years. People will come to the podium after I speak and they'll hand me their business card and they'll say, Mike, you speak my language. This is exactly what uh, my senior executives uh, are talking about, but they're not articulating it in the way that you are. And now I get it. And so that's, uh, I feel really good about that, that I, that I and my colleagues are getting better at articulating these issues and the significance and importance of them. Uh, one is uh, what I call uh, patent and walk away. And that means a person, be it a university researcher or, or whomever, uh, uh, they have an idea, it comes to fr fruition in some way, perhaps they've acquired some venture capital backing and there is now some type of prototype. So um, uh, conventional thought is, first thing I got to do is go to an intellectual property attorney and file, make application for a patent. Well, and the, what the challenge there is, is that oftentimes if that individual was fortunate enough to have a patent issued by the United States Patent Trademark Office in uh, Crystal City, uh, then uh, that's fine, that's wonderful. But in my judgment, it is something what is in more realistically, it's nice to hang on your mantle uh, or on your office wall because, uh, because the, oftentimes the subject who has received the patent, as I say, patent and walk away, they assume that there are some uh, uh, deterrence to others from infringing on their intellectual property, that particular patent. That's simply not the case. By, so it's a similar thing, only much more so with intangible assets because a company owns those intangible assets. Literally it does. Uh, now some people would argue with me about the notion of ownership, but if the company has developed those intangibles internally and has utilized them internally to make itself more profitable, to create some competitive advantages, to create some uh, uh, efficiencies, to elevate its brand, if you will, uh, then uh, I say they own them. <clears throat> but, uh, the challenge with respect to your question is, is uh, that I find, and I'm speaking certainly globally at this point, I find that there are still a very substantial number of, of uh, business executives, senior executives, C-suite types of individuals who have yet to either understand intangibles, take the time, or two, uh, uh, they don't understand uh, how intangible assets evolve with their, their company. And three, and perhaps most importantly, and I've written about this quite a bit, is intangible assets are, are not being taught well in, in business schools or MBA programs. They're just barely cast over. So I can't cast much dispersion on those individuals for that reason, but nevertheless, they're there. Now, why should they, they safeguard them? Well, that, those intangible assets, you come back to that notion that, or that, that fact, I should say, that 80 plus percent of most companies' value either lie in or evolve directly from intangible assets. That should resonate with the C-suite. It should resonate with the board of directors. Now, here is that another reason why some companies, be that their C-suites, their uh, key executives, their boards, et cetera, uh, prefer not to pay a lot of attention to intangible assets is because we do not, they're not reported on company balance sheets, nor are they typically reported on financial statements. Now, I would argue, and a number of my colleagues would argue, that in no way can we adequately uh, uh, understand a company and its true value unless we understand that company's intangible assets. But if they're not being reported 
and there's no mandate to report them outside of, uh, of uh, Sarbanes-Oxley and, and FASB 141-142, uh, Financial Accounting Standards Boards, but those, have, those two pieces of legislation and standards have by and large been, uh, had mixed reviews and, and, and by and large are not being adhered to. Uh, so that's another reason why it's so challenging to, to, to effectively uh, get companies to understand what it is they have and why they should take special initiatives to safeguard intangible assets.